Hello and welcome back to the Puncher's Chance podcast with myself, Sam Hill, and as always, I'm joined by... Harry Tubby. And... Ben Thomas. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at a review of the big Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou fight card, looking at some of the audio clips from the world of boxing, a huge talking point with a possible fight between a retired heavyweight and a YouTuber, and then previewing the big weekend of boxing ahead. But let's get straight into it. Anthony Joshua Francis Ngannou, or Knockout Chaos, the whole card as a whole. What do we think of the event as a whole, in terms of our second or third, I suppose, big Saudi event now that that Turkey Alashik's got involved? What do we make of it all? Looking back at the name of it, they've got a spot on, and they hundred <laughs> percent with that main event. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, they. they... I mean, I was like, I think at some a point of it, I was like, oh, you know what, this isn't. It was dragging on a little bit, and it was just thinking like, oh, oh maybe this lo- is. It was a long. Uh, it was like I think between the first fight and the second fight, there was forty-five minutes. It just feels like too much of a gap between some of the fights, and it just like they could get them go in a bit quicker. Like yeah, and the amount of shots where they cut back to AJ and Garnu in the in the um, change rooms, it was like between every fight, it was just showing AJ and Garnu and them talking about the fight as well. Yeah, and yeah. them two ended up fighting at like two o'clock in the morning, didn't they? Yeah, proper. It was late. It like was imagine late. waiting all day for that first like. Obviously, such a big fight in your career, and you wait until two in the morning. I think it was like, I think it was like just gone three, three a.m. Yeah, Saudi time. Ugh, Mental. That is Mental. way too long. Isn't it? Starts at four, nine out. Oh, yeah, Jesus. tough, tough to keep yourself, you know, like ready and and in the mental state to fight. You know, it must be like constantly just kind of getting ready for it. But let's get into the the first sort of main fight on the main card, which is obviously Justice Huni versus Kevin Lorena for the uh, WBO Global Heavyweight Belt. Um, Justice Hooney got the win um, points decision unanimous decision but it was a tough fight it was a close fight and it was a Lorena a, came to fight I thought, I thought he was going to do him in the end the last one that final round was, like, extra 30 seconds I reckon yeah. he would have done him yeah, May, but, well, was it a 10 round fight that one mm-hmm. yeah, I think if it was 12 rounds he was in trouble at the end yeah the, when he hit him with that shot wobbled his legs I was oh, like he's gone there's I no way he stayed on his he feet finished. Fair play to Hooney for staying on his feet. I, 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 he took some heavy shots in that fight. Um, I think it was is it the first or the second as well where I think he wobbled him as well. And I was surprised that Hooney... He, second round, he knocked it, uh, wobbled him as well. Yeah, and it, it was looking like maybe, you know, it might be. But then Justice Hooney looked impressive otherwise. Other than the, those few moments, he did look quite impressive, I think, in terms of uh, some of the footwork some of the head movements, some of the, the punches. We went fair play to Justice Hooney, fair play to Kevin Lorena for just stepping in the ring oh, with what know, happened on play. Wednesday with his mother passing away. You know, must be what, hard. What it? was going through his mind, you know? He sh- when he walked to the ring, so much emotion, he had tears in his eyes, really. So, yeah, fair play to him for even fighting. Yeah, I think it powered him to a degree in terms of, you could see it right at the end there. Like, I mean, I think his body gave in. I don't think he could have given another punch. No. Like, that last 10 seconds... Even if, even though Hooney was right on the sort of edge of maybe getting finished, you could tell he just didn't have anything else in the locker, um, and maybe he was, you know, like you said, he was powered a little bit by that, um, by losing his mum and and just, you know, wanting to to get that right. But yeah, it was an interesting fight. It was an exciting fight. I think there were there was quite a lot of fighting, sort of like in close in the pocket, which you don't necessarily see loads of in heavyweight boxing. They tend to they tend to try to keep it, you know, a bit ranger because you don't want to get hit with anything, but. It was a good way to start the main card, I Are think. Are we going to talk about the uh, scorecards for it as well? 98-92 to Hooney? Yeah. I thought the two other scorecards, 96-94, were fair. Yeah, it was a close fight. But there, but... 98-92, come on now. Yeah, I was, at no point did I think Lorena was going to win it. I did think it was, it was you know, knockout or lose in that final round. But yeah, like you say, it wasn't quite as uh, as far apart as, as, as yeah, that, that particular scorecard um, suggests... And then the next one, the next fight, our heartbreak fight. Can we, can we fight. skip over this? <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't... All the rest of the fights, I made a few notes on, on bits and bobs as the fight was going on. Um, and this one, I let nothing. Absolutely no notes at all, because I was just... Like, it was painful to watch heartbreaking. from... Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. You know, Gavin obviously went in there and, and in the first round, had that injury to his eye, which was looked horrible. Horrible injury. You could um, see it straight away, because it was soon as it, it just blew up straight away. And then, and then obviously in the in the fourth round, now there's been a bit of a sort of like mix up between of how this fight actually ended. Did the ref? I believe the ref ended the fight. 
No, Tony threw the towel away. See, that's what I thought, but I think the ref ended it at the same time because yeah. on the official, it's gone down as a... Yeah, it's gone down as a TKO. It's a TKO. <sighs> so I think it just... The ref and um, Gavin's coach, Tony... Either way, it was getting stopped. It needed to, wouldn't it? He was, you weren't going to win, You weren't in no position, yeah. with, especially with that eye. Yeah, like, and it was about 15, 10, 15 seconds where he didn't throw anything and it was just high guard and eating punches. It wasn't... It wasn't nice to watch. I mean, it was three, four rounds of high guard and eating punches, to be honest. It wasn't it's just how much of a warrior he is as well, ain't it? You know, going four rounds with one eye. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he didn't move backwards, I think, at almost any point in that fight. Um, and we're forgetting one thing as well. This was his first fight out of the UK as well. Yeah, it was a, it was a big fight. Even suppose... though Ray Vargas, later on, we'll talk about it, thought that Liverpool was uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, neck ball was in his backyard. Yeah, um, <laughs> we should probably give Mark Chamberlain some props. Oh, as much a, as we're saying it, it he's a very good fighter he looked unreal on the night the way he from from the first there was a lot of build up in the fight about you know oh his excellency's picked him out and his excellency that and they build, build bigging him up bigging him up bigging him up didn't even watch the fight can i just say as well yeah they didn't yeah he wasn't he there turned, for it. when he turned up <laughs> ringside he went to frank warren did he win yeah he won and all and oh, come he's on. a busy but, um, man yeah but i think you know it, it would have been easy for him to to just like for that to be too much of a thing for him and him to maybe have a slow start into the fight but from the first second till till the fight was stopped he was dominant he was confident he was throwing punches and hurting gavin obviously i mean he, he didn't drop him at all but they they didn't look like they were you know doing nothing certainly him and uh sam Knox has to be the next fight don't it, surely oh it'd be fireworks i mean Them we said two together would be a very good fight we said this one would be fireworks and and it wasn't quite that in the end because there wasn't quite the opposition that we hoped there would be. But I think, yeah, Mark Chamberlain versus Sam Noakes would be an unbelievable fight. Two is, is not going the distance. You can say that much. There's no way that fight goes the distance. But then for Gavin, when you're looking at what's next for him, you know, he's still European champion. So even Mendy could be, you know, the only thing about that fight that I've got a bit of concerns over is t- we were speaking to Tony the other week and he was saying that they might have to travel to France to fight him. So that's maybe why... Gavin ain't going to be fighting back in Wales but hopefully even though he lost Friday night hopefully we can get him yeah, fighting yeah it's just about rebuilding though, isn't it yeah mm. exactly I love, I love the walkout get him back well. in Cardiff oh, the walkout the was walk good was amazing. the walkout was good <sighs> Goosebumps. Like yeah, goosebumps watching it. Even as an Englishman, like watching that, and it was just like this is mental. That's, a, that's a proper a... song for you, yeah. English lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's coming home and all that. Yeah, no, that's yeah. It was unbelievable. Um, and and you know, as much as I think we'd like to go on about it all day, we should probably give each and every fight its its due diligence. But it was a great fight. Um, not necessarily from our perspective, but a, a good fight nonetheless. Um, and then the, the next one on the night was um Magomed Kurbanov versus Israel Madrimov. Now, like I said at the time, I actually missed this one because I was uh, I was collecting a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> wow! Uh, so I'll I'll let you sell this one to me, boys. I'll let you tell. Go on, I mean, Ben. I know what happened, obviously, but I'll well, let you... you made your predictions for it. Yeah, I had Mad. I put Madrimov to win. I had him down as a decision win. I don't think we actually done predictions for it because of the time. It was it was off. Fight, it was yeah, off the fight this was time off, last week. Yeah. It was nice. To, it was a good fight as well. I, I w- was shocked that it finished so early. I thought it'd be a point decision either way, but I'll say I'll have a win for Madrimov. Very good. First title shot. Yeah. And he's a world champion. And, you know, it's, you know he's now, he was 10-0 and 0 now, and, and Kurbanov was 25-0 and 0 going into it, so he, you'd put him down as the as the underdog going into that fight, you know, on paper. But I don't think, he, you know, from what I've watched it back, he, he didn't look like he, he didn't look like the, the, the underdog, or maybe the, he just went in there and, and, and boxed really well and, and did what he had to do. And obviously won the 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 super welter WBA world to belt, like you say, on his first go. The fighters from Uzbekistan who can just never write them off, can you? No, they, they are scrappers, every single one of them. Yeah, it was. Did they say that he's the new Triple G, or was this? That's I think that's what Eddie Earn said. Yeah. Isn't it? I think that's what Eddie Earn came out and said on uh, Friday night. Yeah, hopefully, you know. Oh, if he is, there. yeah, I'll be I'll be happy about that. And then on to a fight. I'm not quite so happy about daylight robbery. A lot of people are, are not so happy about Nick Ball versus Ray Vargas. Obviously, went in the split draw. What do you two think of the score in all? I'll be honest. I had Vargas way in front up to six rounds, and then Ball just won the remainder. And I think they had six each. Yeah, yeah. but with the knockdown, not- I agree. That's, that's exactly, why I thought Ball. Won. That's exactly how I had it. Um, I think it was. Yeah, I think the uh, Ray Vargas. It was such an awkward fight for Nick Ball in terms of the height. 
you know, Vargas looked so tall next to him and he, he had to overstretch and overreach uh, into every punch and he just didn't have the distance and the timing down at the early parts of the fight. And <laughs> There was a lot of distance to work with though, yeah. weren't there? But... And as he grew into the fight, he worked out that distance and he worked out that timing of, of catching um, Vargas on the way in and, and being explosive like he always is and, and was able to land more punches. Um, and yeah, I think there was, there was a number of times as well where Vargas went down and it wasn't scored as a knockdown. Like, he kept on doing it. He wasn't it, happy with the knockdowns that were scored. No, though, and, was he? but he also like, out of the clinch and stuff, you know, he was being swung around and going, and it almost felt like at times he was just dropping to the floor to then like reset it. Because mm. he was like, well, I'm not, it's not going to be a, a knockdown. Because the referee scored me. it a knockdown for one of them. For one of them. Going for, but I, but I think, like four, didn't he? yeah, I think that's completely fair because it was disrupting the fight. It was stopping Nick Ball being able to do his work. When he was on, when he had the pressure on, Vargas would just fall over, which you can't do in the boxing ring. It's, you know, defend yourself at all, all times. And if you go down, you go down. That's that's a point scored. Um, I think they run it back now. Nah, forget about him. I Nick think Ball, Ray, Ray Ford, Queensberry, Matchroom, June the f- June the first, June the fourth, June the first. That is June the first. Yeah, it, it could it could happen, and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, I, I just I just want Nick Ball to win a world title because I think he deserves it, and particularly after that, he deserves it. I think um, that's probably one of the toughest in terms of world title fights. So it's going to be probably one of the toughest tests he's going to have in it because Ray, like the size difference, yeah. yeah, was so difficult for him to try and get on the inside and work. Like when he did have him caught him a few times, he had him in trouble. But it is difficult with such a reach advantage to try and cut that gap. In it, rem- it reminded me a bit of um, oh, what was it, Hay and Valiev? Yeah, yeah, remember? You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think with any world title fight, generally speaking both fighters can win because you know they've got to that point they're good boxers they, they or they wouldn't have a world title um and you know sometimes it's about what happens on the night and obviously nick ball in a lot of people's eyes did what he had to do on the night to get he the win won. he won come on don't um he but, clearly won but didn't get the didn't get the decision and i just don't know if he'd want to go back for that because on another night he could lose to vargas and then and then it looks you know it doesn't look so great whereas you know you can take the draw and just go elsewhere and get a world title and, and, yeah, and, I think and move on from it. Ray Ford fight probably makes sense. It has to happen next, surely. Yeah, I think Come I on. think it, it makes the most sense. If they want to build that card up to the sort of expectations they set in, I think a fight like that on the undercard would be amazing. I also think it, it would be daft for either Eddie Hearn or um, Frank Warren not to suggest, um, not to suggest the featherweight for the fight because they've both got two great fighters so you know it makes sense from Frank Warren to go yeah I'll I'll put forward um, Nick Ball because I think he's a world title fighter and it makes sense for Eddie Hearn to say yeah I want Ray Ford on the card because he's a world title holder and it makes sense if not that Turkey Alashay goes oh well you've both got two realistically two world title holders that would make him fight so I think we should see that one happen I'd be surprised if we didn't it that's was... the only shame is the fact that because Nick Ball didn't walk away with the title they could have had a unification fight between the two of them that would have been great it would have been it would have been great but you know if but some maybes it didn't happen the, the boxing. judge's decisions the judge's decision that's the thing with boxing never leave it up to the judges if you're going to yeah. do and, yeah. yeah he could have you know people say well knock him out then if you, if you don't Trust the dis- the uh, the refs to give him the decision. Oh, Vargas! I can't believe the Vargas kept on saying, "I've come to his own country and <laughs> to his backyard and only had a proper battering." Then, if he thought Saudi Arabia was a uh, Nick Ball's backyard, unbelievable. And then another fight that was close on the scoring cards. I think both on the on the ref scoring cards and and a close enough fight in terms of on on an, um, on everyone else's scoring cards. Just generally, uh, Joseph Parker Gilles Zhang. This is the the prediction you got wrong, Harry. I have to put that out there. Uh, you said that I think you said Zhang was going to knock him out, and it looked like he might seventh do. seventh round knockout. I got he knocked him down twice, but he just didn't do anything else. What he was just, he doing? Just was the only round. Absolutely done, no yeah. tank whatsoever. What I mean, was it, he doing? You can't help but think if Zhang had, you know, uh, like a round or two's just more fitness in him. Then Maybe, he yeah. he could have put Parker. Parker's you know, in his prime now, though. Ain't he, he is the man of the heavyweight division. Hundred percent. He looks really good, and and you know to to get knocked down in the third, and and at that point Zhang was flowing really well, and it was looking like the kind of night where it wasn't even a hard punch as well. Yeah, it, it just yeah the like kind of bang. And and, and I think bang. they I think they said it on the build up that <laughs> that he yeah he can. Well done, 
Uh, he bangs. Um, the, <laughs> uh, when when Zhang's on his night and when he looks good and when those f- punches are flowing, that he's almost unstoppable. And it seemed like after three three rounds, it looked like that was going to be how it went. And then to turn that around and and just box smart. I mean, he just kept he he didn't he didn't rush in. He kept his distance. He picked his punches cleverly. He didn't overcommit himself, but he didn't undercommit. And just kind of won rounds and steadily won rounds. Um, which is what you've got to do against someone like Zhang that, that in one punch can, can put you on your ass or you know, or put you to sleep. When the result was read as well, Zhang looked very confused. So maybe his corner was like telling him that, oh, you're comfortably winning well, these be, rounds. To be fair, with two knockdowns and probably a couple of rounds where he thought he might have been winning I them. I don't think he won. Like, I, I, I I the only rounds winning, he won but... were the ones he knocked him down. Yeah. I, think I, think he won won, I think he won the first three. I think he won the first three. And obviously then the two knockdowns, which is five. And then I'd give Parker the other seven rounds. So I think I that's how I'd have scored so would it. would have had it. 112, 114, yeah. which is how one of the judges had yeah. it. The one that had it as a draw, I don't know about that one. Mm. I think if you were to... I don't know. I think if you were to put it one way or the other, it would have had to be um, to Parker. But after that second knockdown, even after that, I was like, wow, Parker's... You know, he's built himself back into the fight and then he's just been dropped again. It's... Yeah. it's, it's Fight Since back. he's gone under the arms of uh, Andy Lee, he's just been a different fighter. Yeah, he looks he looks really really good. To be fair to it's him, it's a great partnership and it's just and like the main event. But there's two fights you make out of that now, though. Surely you know, the you rematch. You do Joseph the rematch Parker first. and Joe Joyce, I think. No, forget about him. You do the rematch first. Yeah, maybe. Because it's one one now. Yeah, I can I can see why we're going to talk about this later with but things being one one. But it's not one one. It's one one in the amateurs. So it's one nil in the pros. No, the it's amateur one, game doesn't it was matter. One nil in the amateurs. Oh, yeah, but got, the, ama- the, the amateurs doesn't it's matter. It's technically one one though. No, it's not. It is. <laughs> it's it's not. Not. I, it I'd is. go with Parker against Joe Joyce, and then Zhang and Hergovic. Yeah, I think I think for me when you Zhang it, never lost that first fight against Hergovic. So, so you yeah. want to do two rematches then? Yeah, but separate them. Yeah, I think if Zhang fights Hergovic for the IBF title shot. Um, which I think Hergovic has got. He's got the he's because, a mandatory challenger. So he, yeah. if Zhang and Hergovic fight for that, and then Parker, you know, but gets this, his win, hopefully over Joe Joyce that he deserves. Then you're then setting up after Usyk, Fury, AJ, etc. has all happened. You've got two perfectly made challengers ready who have got the the belts or got the, a oh, very important thing though. There's a rematch clause in this fight. Yeah, he but, said it afterwards. And yeah. Parker, even Parker said, this ain't Zhang. Parker said, we'll do the rematch and then we'll go on to something else. Yeah, but, but you know. Yeah, maybe it will be it, the rematch, it, but I think it should just go separate. I, I like the way that Ben's talking, though. Zhang Hergovic, yeah. that's the fight, honestly. It's a good fight. Is, I agree with him. Zhang did not lose that I think that first once fight. you get this unification fight with Fury and Usyk out the way, whoever's got the four belts, whever wins the four belts out of them two, I think they'll start to split the belts up anyway. Well, Fury said they'll have he's gonna... so many different mandatory yeah. challenges that are going to be waiting. Fury said once that fight's over May 18th, one one of the belts already leaving him. So yeah, it keeps their heavyweight division active then, doesn't it? Yeah, and then speaking of the heavyweight division, speaking of someone who's been active, Anthony Joshua got the finish on Francis Ngannou. Not just got the finish, got a clean Absolute knockout. State. I've never seen a knockout like that in my life. I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I got the round completely wrong <laughs> but not many people him. were suggesting that Francis Ngannou could be stopped they were saying oh there's no way his I MMA his would be too good. four ounce gloves but look compared to him October 28th he looked huge in that ring yeah AJ looked the bigger man Friday yeah. night I mean I, I I just had a feeling that that Joshua was going to have the minerals to, to dominate I didn't expect him to get the finish that early it but, really showed the skill gap, or didn't it? Yeah, oh, it's, it's heavyweight boxing, and and I don't think there is a man in heavyweight boxing that could take those three punches that um that Ngannou it took and so stayed on their clean. feet. It was as if he knew it was going to happen before. He just well, set it up. If you look, if so, I mean, when I said there was loads, they kept cutting to Anthony Joshua in the in the changing rooms between the whole event, and every single time they cut near enough. It was AJ practicing a right hand, following through on the pads um, with Ben Dave- Ben Davison. He's done it all his career. And he was he was, but but the difference is he's now following through with yeah. with with the hips. He's turning the hips. He's following through with that punch, and he's punching right through their head. He's through everything in um, the end, didn't he? Yeah, and I think he landed that punch. I think against Andy Ru- Andy Ruiz in the first fight, first one, yeah. and Ruiz ate it. I don't think Ruiz ate that punch that AJ landed on Ngannou. Uh, they set it up. 
They knew AJ was going to parry those jabs. Parry, parry, parry. Bang. Through the middle. And he folded. Like What a knockout. Scary. I don't think I... As I said, I don't think I've ever seen a knockout like that in my life. There's no one that's putting Garno down like that ever. No, and I... I Thanks for no, first time. Not even in the, the UFC. Floor. I think... I no think one stopped... Yeah, you, you're right there. People, no one stopped them, really. People have been knocked out, like, similar to that. You know, plenty in boxing, but when it's a heavyweight... Not for a while, though. When it's a 270-plus pound heavyweight, just... Like, the way... The, how slowly he falls and the legs give way underneath him, it was a scary, was gone, scary knockout. I mean, he said afterwards, he went, it didn't hurt. It was like, because I was gone. He was yeah, like, what a stupid question by that journalist. Did it? the punch hurt? Yeah. No. <laughs> What's he doing? He's not, no. He didn't feel the punch. No, he didn't see it coming. Um, if one of them lands on Furiosic, they yeah, are not, I don't think they are taking that either, are they? Yeah, so what... What's next for AJ? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We'll, we'll Get him save... on the 5v5. He wants to fight in June. Yeah, yeah, true. Who, who? But the only thing is, what Queensbury heavyweights gonna get in with him? Queensbury have got some decent heavyweights. Have not, they got not H- AJ level? Have they got Hergovic? They've got Daniel Hergovic Dubois. Hergovic is matchroom though, ain't it? Is he matchroom? Or Cali Sandler? Uh, they've got Joseph Parker, Daniel Dubois, Gilles Zhang, Joe Joyce, Moses Atoma, David Adelaide. I mean, those I think would be a you'd be just sending them in there to get knocked out. Um, Daniel Gilles Dubois Zhang is probably the only one. Dubois, you could do. You could do Dubois. I wouldn't put Dubois in with AJ. Nor would I. Not no. Um, but who then? But I don't think you could. Does put he have to have a five v five? Can he just go on the card and make it even bigger? I don't think. That, I don't think you could. If you've got, he's the main. He's got whatever Bivol, card he's on. Or is going to be main event. You, yeah, you've got Bivol and that um, is the main event. Is, is the main yeah. event. Maybe he fights uh, in the UK. As he said, he wants to fight back in the UK in the summer. Get him a big yeah, show true. in. Tottenham or is it Wembley now with he moving away from Wembley you could do Wembley or you could do yeah the Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium um, but yeah I don't know I think out of all of those I'd possibly pick Dubois just because you know a lot of people think he should have beaten Usyk I, you know there was the he, the body shot and maybe that was it low was it alright <laughs> I whatever, think it was alright I think he's go. the only one other than maybe Joseph Parker that you could argue would be at a level in which he could compete I don't think he would but he could compete um are you boys going to be changing your predictions for May 18th, though? That's the question. Absolutely no. not. Absolutely So you not. think that you want this Fury AJ fight. So let's let's go through what boxing would do. After seeing what happened Friday night, it's made me even more, more confident yeah. in my After yeah, but, pick. All right, listen, listen. So Fury and Usyk goes ahead. Yep. Now May 18th. Yep. Usyk beats Fury. Mm-hmm. There's a rematch. Yeah. Fury knows what's then coming from Usyk. Yeah, Fury beats Usyk in the rematch. Then there's a trilogy. Now we're into 2025. Oh, they were, they can't be doing trilogies. Yeah, it's boxing I, though. Yeah. It's one one. I don't know. I think it's one one. Egos and all that. That Fury and Joshua fight is the fight to make. I'm down in win. the way you're predicting it, and many other people are. That's the back end of 2025. We'll see AJ Fury. In yeah, the ring. I think. I and think that's so long. I think the problem is, yes, I think for boxing. Or for AJ and, and Fury, the best thing that would happen. That's would be all Fury my predictions for. That's be... all I'm going off because I want to see AJ oh, and Fury. No, no, no! Don't yeah, be going back no, on this. No, 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 no! <laughs> no, don't be going. Also, back on... back in the Brit is what I'm doing. Yeah, you can't be going back on saying you think. You're I've, only got, I've said it. Fury from day one. As all my um, defense back to you was that we will never see the AJ fight. Yes, I agree with that. For boxing, the better result <laughs> would be Tyson Fury to beat Usyk. Yeah. But my prediction is, and who is going to win? I'm like Ben said. After that, I am way more confident that Usyk is going to beat Fury because Fury made Fury could really turn up. And if he if he turns up like he did it, for Wilder yeah, two could and give him a He's kick done. up the arse that he probably needed. But he did make he did make um, AJ made Ngannou look useless, and it was an Ngannou that Fury made look very good. But was Ngannou too cocky this time around? Though? Maybe. Or, I just, I just don't like. I think I just showed the skill gap. I think the judge decision on that um, Fury and Garnu fight has cost AJ. He could have a belt around his waist right now. Yeah. He should have a belt right around his waist right you now. You could if, see, you could see you as soon that, as uh, and Garnu was it. Yeah. If he, you could see on his face, he knew he was in. Yeah. If if Ngannou, in trouble. If Ngannou beat Fury like a lot of people say he did, then AJ should have a belt around his waist right now. That's what um, AJ said as well. Yeah, which is which is mental. I'm going to move on to some of the audio clips. Hang on, um, let's talk about Ngannou as well. What's <laughs> Ngannou going to do? I've got that as oh, one okay. of the audio clips, right. so so we'll leave it. Don't forget about Ngannou. But quickly before that, now this 
we've seen a lot of the names around the top of the heavyweight division fight now over the last sort of five six months top five heavyweight boxers in the world where would you put everyone i'm happy to go first because obviously you guys haven't prepped this um I'll, uh, <laughs> but you know what would you rank so for me my top five heavyweight rankings would be number five daniel dubois number four tyson fury number three joseph parker number two anthony joshua and number one alexander rusik based off what we've seen over the last you know x amount of time all right say that say yours again sorry i wasn't i was focusing on something else uh <laughs> dubois yeah fury parker so you've agreed AJ, with box track then have i i haven't looked <laughs> yeah, box, literally sorry. what box is track it? is yeah oh there we go then well i, I think... think the only one i would switch with yours is i would put tyson maybe oh I'd put Usyk. I put Joshua, Zhang in se- Zhang fifth and Dubois. Yeah, I would drop Dubois D- below. Yeah, I get that. Who's Dubois fought? I'd like right, to see Dubois and uh, yeah. Ajit Kaibel go yeah. against each other. Who's Ajit Kaibel with? He's, I don't know actually. I don't know, but I think I don't know. He no. Um, I think the problem is I think that Zhang that fought against Parker. I think Dubois beats. I, I think Hergovic he... is fourteenth. Yeah, that's on box rec. Um, well, but we yeah. know, we've known from that one <laughs> post that we put out that's yeah. had a lot of views that box um, rec is shocking for rankings. No, but the I think I think that Daniel Dubois beats the Zhang that that fought Parker just because you I think d- Dubois beats Zhang. I think that Zhang loses to most decent heavyweights because he just had no. no tank. He had nothing left no. in his tank. He's too powerful. Yeah, man. in terms of his, he was a two. He, he landed. He landed two big punches, and if he bangs or you're very in little. He bangs a lot. <laughs> yeah, but the big... every time he gets brought up, now that's just gonna yeah. be. <laughs> but I think dynamite. I just got the video. I think dynamite beats the Big Bang. I think he does. <sighs> he's just he's just made a clip. Maybe also maybe also fight too. I don't want to see go that's our fifth. That's Zhang all day. That fair enough. Fair enough. So you 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 said Zhang five, and then Zhang five, <sighs> Parker can... four. Yeah, Parker four. Because Fu- Fury's a champion. Cha- yeah, Fury, Joshua. But Ray Vargas sick. is a champion. But would you say Nick Ball's better? Nick Ball is better. Ray Vargas is a crybaby. It's just, it's interesting. <laughs> We've seen a lot of those fighters happen, fights happen, and I think it moves around people a little bit. Maybe, particularly after the Usyk Fury fight, that's when we can definitely revisit and look at who who's the ranked heavyweights, because it'll change a lot. We've seen a lot of big heavyweight fights. Um, but yeah, like I said, we'll move on to the audio clips. AJ, on, AJ spoke after the fight um, in their press conference, um, talked about... Francis Ngannou, and this was a clip from the Queensbury Twitter um, where uh, AJ had some nice things to say about AJ and, and sorry about Ngannou and some of the things coming up in the future. Don't let this discourage you. You know, don't let success get to your head, and you should never let failures get to your heart. Um, I think you're, and I told him, I think he's an asset to boxing. He's an asset to the fight game. Don't be discouraged, and um, I respect you regardless. I said it before, and I still stand on it. I know we had to fight, but. That's what I say I mean. So I just told him, like, keep your head high. So AJ there said that he still thinks Nganu is an asset to boxing. He doesn't think this is the end of Nganu's road in, in, in heavyweight boxing. But what do we see for Nganu going forward? Um, you know, a lot of people were talking about, oh, if he wins this, then then he's the, you know, he's the next. But he obviously lost he's in. He's gone in, back to the MMA. And he has to. He's got a fight in the MMA. Quite, he's the PFL. Yeah. Isn't he? He's got that Raynan Ferreira fight. But do you think he has a future in boxing in terms of... Do you think he gets any more big fights? Oh, can, yeah, definitely. I can. I want to see him in against the likes of Parker, Zhang, potentially Dillian White, who makes a return on Sunday. Yeah. I reckon that could be a good one. need someone one. in there with him that's just going to bang with him Go and health throw punches. Yeah, yeah it was, it's interesting because everyone was talking about him as the next biggest thing, but I don't think people were expecting AJ to, to make him look quite as silly as he did. Uh, and he so showed the skill gap, didn't he? Like, yeah, like you could see with that punch, like it was coming from a mile off, and he just wasn't he just prepared walked into it as well, didn't he? Arms down and yeah, yeah he his, just his hands were way too low. AJ like, set against up the trap. Any, any half decent heavyweight is gonna land shots like a who can't keep eating him. Johnny Fisher. Well, I don't know. Is that you think? I think is I don't know. Level. <sighs> but on. then you think? Come on now. 
like he took Fury ten rounds and like. But it was an off Fury, night for Fury. Come yeah, on, let's, it, sh- let's, it showed how bad Fury was our night. But I don't think it was. I don't think it was an off night for Fury. I think it was an off Fury that turned up that night. He was yeah. fat. He was un. Yeah, he just didn't take him for the money, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't care. And, he saw and, how much AJ got. God knows how much Fury got for that fight. Oosh, with big, money. big money. Big um, money. Silly money. And Can't then, even count that high. <laughs> Can you not like what forty? And then you just say million. No, I can't be asked whatever. to count that. Fair high, enough. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and then the other audio clip I've got, which is also from the Queensbury Twitter, is what Frank Warren had to say about that Nick Ball fight um, after the press conference. I'm sure he was a. Uh, he was very he was level happy. and uh, and confident with uh, with the result. And I'd just like to say one thing. I thought Nick Ball got absolutely rubbed tonight in the fight. He, he looked ex- exceptionally well. It was a terrible decision. Terrible, terrible. So, uh, yeah, pretty emphatic from Frank Warren. Um, he's not lying, is he? Yeah, he, he's, he's telling the... the what what a lot of people are thinking. Um, you don't often get them say it quite that emphatically, but you know that's what he believes. I think he waited right to the end of the press conference, and they were just about to walk off. And he <laughs> went, "By the way, let me just get this in." He got completely robbed. Um, and we've spoken a lot about the future of of Nick Ball, but what we'll do is it five v five, yes, or is it rematch? No. Which one would you want to see? Five v five. I right don't forward. know. Like, it'd be useful, I think, for him to have a. Uh world title of his own one like he should he should have had it Friday night really I think but I suppose he could go and get the world title against Ray Ford and that's the fight to make ain't it he it's could the go fight back. that makes sense he could go back to that Vargas fight after Ford then maybe yeah, does th- Vargas fight him in his backyard though in Saudi Arabia I think it makes mo- <laughs> I think it makes more sense to get the Ray Ford fight on now because of the matchroom card like if that matchroom card wasn't happening you probably wouldn't have th- thought of that fight straight away yeah but with the matchroom card happening matchroom queensbury card yeah and i suppose then if if nick ball loses to ray ford then he can go and get a rematch with ray vargas and that's his route back into it knowing he thinks he can beat him that was my, and if that was and if be he beats point. ray ford yeah. then he can also have the rematch with ray vargas and unify. they'll be and yeah unify the belts and ray vargas will have something to go for so i think that yeah hopefully we do see them on that card and i think it would be daft if we didn't but a card that I mean this is a boxing fight I never saw coming ever it's a did you not I never this has been in the works for years man yeah I never saw Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fighting in in any universe um what's uh, Mike Tyson's box rack ranking has <laughs> he got one he's inactive cru- isn't cru- he a cruiserweight is he active? um so yeah obviously Jake Paul Mike Tyson fighting on a live event AT&T Stadium July the 20th this summer um, it's not been yet said whether it's going to be an exhibition fight or whether it's going to be a pro fight there's no way at all. but everything is saying that it's going to be it's going to be a fight this is no marketing scam where they're just you know they're playing it off as a fight and it's going to be another event everyone's saying that Jake Paul is fighting Mike Tyson um, he signed the contract what do you make of it? <laughs> As a fight, I'm, as an event, as a, as a boxing, you know, we watch boxing week in week sad, out. It's sad it? to see. Yeah, it's sad. Why? Why is Jake Paul fighting him? You know, we saw Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather's been doing exhibitions since he's retired. You know, <sighs> yeah, thirty-one year gap in between them. Yeah, thirty-one, which, which I think is actually he'll be fifty-eight. Yeah, before the fight, his birthday's just prior to the fight, and he's going to be fifty-eight years old. Yeah, yeah, it's it's he's old, and it's. I mean, I can see why he's doing it in terms of money, but I think it's a shame that that you know. Yeah, it's what Jake Paul does, though, ain't it? He fights um, several over the hell fighters. Yeah, but look but, at it, Anderson Silva, <laughs> forty-seven years old. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to know what the average age of Jake's opponents are now. It's got to be up there. They're not um, that high, but they, he's just fighting fighters that have no business going back into the fighting world. Yeah, I'm open. This just a big like pulling everyone's leg and it's just going to be like an ultimate fighter type thing where they have they train fighters yeah, it's a up. big stadium though to have it though yeah, yeah. that's what I mean that's what I think where they've put it and like having it on Netflix and everything and the build up around it does look as if it's going to be them two fighting but it just shouldn't be happening should is it, it is it going to be the Super Bowl of boxing you know live performances half all yeah, that yeah it'll have to be a big big event I don't know how many people are going to watch our on Netflix as well though. 
well, it's, it's, it's not it's not pay per view, so so it's probably going to be one of watched yeah, boxing huge event, yeah, huge but. views. Um, what I'll do then, real quick, I've got one audio clip, which is what Eddie Hearn had to say about the fight, um, and then we'll talk about maybe how we see the fight going after that. And and this one was from IFN Boxing um, on Twitter. Tyson Fury, Jake Paul, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a hardcore boxing fan. He's one of my heroes. I find it very sad. But it's a big event. I understand people are going to watch it. And uh, it's entertainment, I guess. But for uh, someone that idolised the guy growing up, yeah, not the best day. You think Jake Paul gets any credibility if he beats Mike Tyson? He's 58 years old. So, he's right though, ain't he, Eddie? He's bang on. He, Eddie even Hearn, if he beats him, he's not beating Mike Tyson. He's just beating a 58-year-old man that's been out ring. It's going to make people hate him even more. I think, let's let's say this. Let's make a, a, a decision. So, obviously, what Jake tries to do is he tries to pick an opponent at a level which is comfortably he can beat but he can try and make look like we'll be better than they are. That's kind of what we've seen from him in terms of Andre August. Oh, he's the Texan light heavyweight champ. Um, Ryan Borland, who was, oh, he used to be, he's a professional boxer with a, a great record. He's also out the ring for, you know, four years or whatever it was. Tyson Fury. If he beats Tyson Fury or... Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson even. <laughs> not Tyson Fury. He I don't be, back him against Tyson Fury. He wouldn't be Tyson Fury. <laughs> Maybe in like 20 years he I'd might. I'd love to see that. Um, Jake Paul, Tyson Fury. Sorry, Mike Tyson. In 20 years, he might beat Tyson Fury. But Mike Tyson, does Jake Paul gain any credit from beating him? Or do you think Mike Tyson has any chance of beating Jake Paul? What do you think? Because there's a lot of people... There's no rules in place yet. No. So let's say professional fight. Oh. Does Mike Tyson have any chance of beating Jake Paul? He's going to have about two or three combinations that he'll throw at him before he's probably gassed and then we'll just eat punches as a, you'd expect from a near 60 year old man yeah I think I think there was a clip going around not that long ago about um, where Mike Tyson was hitting pads and he looked really really impressive he still wouldn't want to take a punch off him. really quick really explosive um, but he went on the Joe Rogan podcast admitted he was in bed for a week after that 30 second clip exactly you see that clip and then the next day he's at an airport getting pushed around in a wheelchair yeah I, I don't like it but are we going to watch it yes yeah, of course it's entertainment we are. of course we are but if it's I, exhibition rules it's going to be a draw yeah so what happened to, I you think know, Jake Paul said he wants to be world champion what happens oh, they're just going down that route yeah can we just why are we diverting over to doing a silly exhibition <laughs> yeah, fight it'll have to be a pro fight from Jake's perspective in terms of PR because he yeah he said I want to be a world champ so what better way to do it than beat uh, an an world ex world champ, but where Mike Tyson comes back after thirty odd years after his retirement or whatever it is. When did he retire? Two thousand five. Two thousand five was his last fight. Yeah, when so I was what, born. Oh, oh, Eighteen years is, <laughs> makes me feel old. <laughs> no, it does, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, imagine him coming back and just sparking Jake Paul out. That'd be beautiful. He'd be, be beautiful. He'd be a legend in boxing for. He'd he's already a loved. boxing legend anyway, but I think he'd be. He put yeah. himself to the pinnacle. With he that. would be the most loved human being, I think, in the world <laughs> at that point. Like people would be so happy to see Jake Paul. Get Imagine up, Twitter you know. that day. Ah, <laughs> oh, it would be carnage. But we'll, we'll we'll get to that when when it does or doesn't. When happen is it happening? July twentieth. So, so, yeah, so deep so. into the summer. This weekend we've got some great back to proper boxing. Proper though. boxing. Yeah. Some really great fi- fights and some really great events. Um, I'll start with you, you mentioned on it a little bit earlier, Dillian White. Returning to the ring um, versus Christian Hammer, 27 and 10, heavyweight clash in the TF Royal Hotel um, in Ireland. In County Mayo. It's it's an interesting fight, and I think maybe, I think it's one that's gone under the radar. People didn't really see it. A lot of people aren't really talking about the fact it's that... It's come around quite quick, haven't it? Dillian like, White's back in the ring um, after the supposed... Uh, what was it? It was some supplements test. that were... That was the issue and the contaminated, contaminated yeah. substance. So... Realistically, does he have to fight? Probably not, because he's probably going to get a fat paycheck from whatever that supplement company was that <laughs> that uh, after he sues them. But you know, is it nice? Is, is it nice to see Dillian White back in the ring? Is he's it, one is, of my favourite fighters? Is he one we want to see back in the mix, fighting uh, fighting people now, or, or just you know, he's where Fran- does he really go now? Though Francis he- Ngannou. That that fight is probably the one, isn't it? You just set that up, give him one last big payday. Imagine two big fuckers because you know he, you know, yeah, you other. know he's going to meet him in the middle and he's going to have a war. I think two big what? Two big fuckers. Oh, okay, sorry. 
Um, and yeah, you know he's going to be. I can't, I can't the, believe I heard then from Ben. Um, two, my fight, mate. two big, yeah, big fighters. I think that's. I think that's a fight I'd like to see in in Saudi yeah. Arabia. Why yeah. not get him out there? But both Guess men have as well, Emily. Yeah, yeah. We can go out to Saudi Arabia then. Why is that? Just because. I want to see <laughs> Dillian White. Dillian White. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But both men, if we're talking in depth about this fight, both men haven't fought since 2022, so it's probably the best opponent. Yeah, it's a good matchup. Yeah. It's a good matchup. I, I I see Dillian White winning it, but you never know. Yeah, it's just one to warm himself back up. Chrissy yeah. Hammer. He beat a certain David Price. Did he? Yeah. He Fair did. enough. Yeah, I do my Fair research play. on these fighters. <laughs> As do I. I mean, I knew that information, obviously. I was just Christian Hammer acting surprised. in his last fight lost to Joe, Joe Joyce. Joyce. Oh, yeah. Someone did his research as well. Who else has he lost to then, Ben? Have you got any more names? Uh, I wouldn't no? be out all day, otherwise well, if we start talking about that. Povetkin, Huey Fury, Frank Sanchez, Luis Ortiz. So he's been in there with some big names. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's a big, big... It's, a, it's He's going to win comfortably, ain't he, Dillian White? Let's be honest. You'd hope so. Um, but it's just nice to see him back in the ring and, and obviously some of the future fights that might we might be able to see. Or they might even just use him as a sort of... Um, as like a build-up fight for uh, the Is likes Chisora of... Is still fighting? I don't think he is. And just chop them to win trilogy. I love watching I'm them I'm thinking in together. terms of someone like Moses Atoma or Johnny Fisher as like a no, you know this is the up, entrance like, to yeah. you know this is someone who's been in there with the best. You have to be. The, it might I be. I think the fight to make after this is Dillian White, Joe Joyce, because both men are coming back up the ranks. I think no, Joe I Joyce. Think Joe Joyce got to move on from Arnold. He's got to push yeah. on. Rank. I think Joe Joyce called Get out Joseph Parker. I think I saw on Twitter. Um, but we'll we'll see with Joe Joyce. That's an easy, it's an easy fight for Ngani then, though, is it? Do you think so? Yeah, After what we seen Friday, not, not not from what we saw Friday, but we haven't seen Dillian White for over two years. So can yeah, we even watch this fight? Well? Fundamentals, isn't he? Can we even I watch don't know. this fight? On I don't know. Sunday? I'm sure we can. It's um, on St. Patrick's Day as well, so it's yeah, going to be quite I don't a decent know atmosphere. If we can, but I'm sure we can. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure I your weather swings out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always find a way. Um, Make sure you send us a link then. I can't see I can't see somewhere you can watch it, but I'm sure there is one. Um and then another fight um that's happening on this weekend, um Maxi Hughes, British fighter fighting William Cepeda Segura for the um vacant IBF eliminator. Um so whoever wins this one gets the an IBF um title fight in the lightweight division, Chelsea Ballroom Vegas. It's always nice to see a Brit getting that title shot or getting a shot towards the title. Um you know, if Maxi Hughes wins that fight, who do we see getting the fight against him for that for that IBF belt? Winner of Knox and Chamberlain, probably. Or yeah, you know, obviously Mark Chamberlain's already got a uh, a title. He's got the Intercontinental now. He's mm. probably going to be wanting that world title belt. Probably makes maybe, it easier though, ain't it? Maybe maybe Gavin tries to get himself in on that in a no, in a card in Cardiff. So there's two vacant. World title belt and they're that lightweight. So, I yeah, think Gavin Gwynn's going to get go down the route now, of just focusing on defending his European title and then rebuilding, because he ain't going to fight now until August September. Yeah, yeah it's a nasty injury. injury. It'll take, take a while, a time to heal, and take a while. But um, yeah, like I say, it's always just nice to see a Brit getting in there. Um, do you he, think he can do it? He goes in as the That's as tough. the. He's just, is he the favourite? No, no, I'd say Segura's the favourite, 29 and 0. Um, he's 26, 26 and 6, uh, Maxi Hughes. So I, do, I think he goes in there as the as the underdog. He's coming off a loss as well, can we all just point out against yeah. George Cambosis Jr. But it's quite controversial, that decision was, because a lot of people had that Maxi Hughes winning. Yeah, and, and it was an, he, he lost to, to George Cambosis with a... He, he lost his IBO world light which is about he had and defended for like six six fights or something. So he, you know, he's fought, you know, up at the top. He's had the WBC International, um, obviously had the British and, and things like that. I think it'll be an interesting fight, but to be honest, yeah, I think he, he does unfortunately go into it as the, the sort of the less likely to win of the two. Um, and then the other one being another fight or the other event being the, the Magnificent Seven card, oh, another one. Can't wait for this. The last one we had was an absolute stormer of, a, of an event. That was um, one of the first ones we covered, I think. Wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. It was right down by the start. Cracking memories there. Um, and it's another brilliant card. I mean, you look at the bottom of the card at the moment, Joe Joyce versus Cash Alley. Joe Joyce getting coming back. Um, this one's in Birmingham in the Resorts World Arena. 
how excited are we to see Joe Joyce come back into the uh, back into the ring and 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 after some some losses? He's one of my on favourite heavyweights. It's rebuilding time yep. for him. No one else. Yeah, young perfect Barker. rebuilding fight after this is Dillian White. Yeah, true. Yeah. Maybe, possibly. Um, but yeah, that's. It's, it's, I mean, to consider that's. I mean, I don't know if it will actually be, but according to Boxrec, that's at the very bottom of the card. Let's just hope Cash Ali ain't hungry in this fight I as well. can't see that being the first fight on, surely. No, it's no, a co-main event, event so. surely. I don't think it is. But Say now, though, there's a lot of like, title fights. Is that this, Parker? There's a hell of a lot McCann. of title fights. Um, Going back to Cash Ali, mine, as I said, hopefully he's not hungry when he goes into the ring. <laughs> Do you boys remember when he fought David Price? <laughs> He bit him everywhere. Oh, did he? Got it? disqualified like, for biting. Jesus, oh, wet. I know. I don't actually. So I can't believe he's on our TV screens again. To be yeah. honest, he's back. He's back. Um, if he picks up the win, or yeah, hey. Joe Joyce is in trouble then. Oh, Joe Joyce retires. If he loses this fight, he retires. Yeah, possibly. And I think the the problem with the, the only real problem with this card is in terms of talking about it. There's so many good fights. You can't really. You know, you can't you spend ages. Prayer, you could go on no. for ages about it. Ethan James fighting Owen Cooper for the British um, welter and the European welter. It's two um, undefeated fighters, um, twelve and zero and nine and zero, going at it for those belts. Dennis think, McCann, Brad Strand. What yeah. a fight that is! You know, that's that, fight of the night in my opinion. Right, it'll there. be a great fight for the Commonwealth champion Dennis McCann faces the European champion Brad Strand. Yeah, and another so, one, two undefeated fighters. And that's for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Yeah, and we we, title. we spoke a lot to Josh, Joshua John, who lost to Brad yeah, Strand at, at York Hall for that European belt that he holds, which I don't think is up for grabs in this Josh. fight. Um, so it, if Dennis McCann does brush aside Brad, Brad Strand, then, then that's a fight maybe I think Josh said yeah, he'd be one interested for Josh in, to look, look in a rematch. Well, it's probably it. one of the toughest... Bantamweight, super bantamweight, it's probably one of the toughest divisions in terms of world title yeah, fights on it. For sure. So you've got sure. way and uh, Lewis Nery are fighting soon as well. Yeah, well, like the two top dogs week, of yeah. the division. Yeah, and then Liam Davis versus Eric Robles Ayala are fighting on the card as well for the IBO World Super Bantam. So it's, you know, there's two Super Bantam title fights on this card. Liam Davies goes in 15 0, Ayala 15 1 0. So it should be a really close fight, that one. Um, an interesting one. And, and Liam Davies is a. Is a exciting fire to watch. I enjoy watching him. I can't remember what the the last fight he had was um, off the top of my head. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, Vincenzo La Femina for the which he won the European belt um, uh, at the end of last year was a an exciting fight. Which of these fights? I mean, I think we haven't even Zach gone Parker. through. Yeah, Zach Parker, Tyron Zagi. The main event is going to be the one in it. Yeah, we haven't yeah. even talked about the main event. Nathan Heaney, Brad Pools. Obviously, Nathan Heaney defending his uh, his British title belt. How excited are we to see Nathan Heaney? We've, we've spoken probably... we've mentioned His name has been mentioned quite a lot on this podcast, even when he's not fighting, just because, you know, the crowd he brings, the audience... That That's the, what I'm looking forward to. How One exciting his fights British are. British fight does the watch, isn't he? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think... I saw something on social media. It was like he made his, like... He's finally done the like 486th um collection or, or um of his tickets that he sold so he sold like 2,000 tickets individually and he's made like 486 trips to drop them off <laughs> or something like that i saw on twitter it was mental um but it shows what you know the the effort he goes towards to to putting up these fights and and you know building that if he wins brilliant. saturday night though is he one fight if he gets over brad paul's on saturday is he that one fight away from making that stadium fight in Stoke oh, it's got it's to, happen. Happen. It has to happen. Has to happen yeah it absolutely has to it would be but a who, robbery who though who could he fight does he uh, after that I don't mm. know if he gets a world does he get the rem- Denzel Bentley Heaney rematch or do you reckon nah forget about that yeah maybe not just because I think he won that fight quite quite you know I was quite convincingly won that fight you need something interesting in it don't you yeah it's a tough one it's a tough sort of division to call because I think the likes of I mean maybe Hamza Shiraz obviously was very impressive against um, yeah, a big like Liam Williams domestic could, clash would do well I think I think yeah but then you know does does Shiraz 19-0 and 0, does he I mean they would both be 19-0 and 0 on that yeah. one yeah maybe that could be the fight but I think Shiraz maybe he's, a, he's obviously a big fighter as well he might want um, a home fight what about him on the 5v5 card Austin Williams yeah, you. I think did you did one of us put Nathan Heaney down as 
I think one of us put it. I think we put it down for atmosphere when we. I picked, think like, I no. I, fight. I wanted to say I said that I wanted Heaney on the on that fight in Saudi Arabia just because of um, what the crowd he bring. But I think when we spoke to uh, Jared, he didn't like who I paired him with. I can't remember who that was at the, at the time. But yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting one. But we can't look past his opponent. Um, I was going to say you could do this weekend at all. You bank junior. Yeah, similar to what Liam Williams done in Cardiff with his fight with him, but Eubank Jr. has got a fight lined up with someone, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I think he does have something. I can't remember what it was. Lined no. up. Is it, it? Is it? It's not. No, that's Colin Ben with Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Uh, Chris Don't Eubank Jr. Yeah, we've, 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 we've done that. skipped over that announcement. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. I mean, so much has happened in this last week. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao fighting Conor Ben. <laughs> that's another crazy one I suppose the, the, I think that's the going to be an is, exhibition because no but Manny Pacquiao is wanting to fight in the Olympics I believe what? which is why he's yeah, getting back you, ready in the you, ring he's well, fighting can, hang on I thought you, you can't they go won't back let him have a license for the Olympics or I thought once you turn pro you can't go back to the yeah. amateurs yeah I didn't think so but there was talks about him wanting to do that in some form and so maybe this is his a fight to obviously get himself ah, that's what it is it's uh, Crawford Oh, Terence Crawford, yes, of course it has, yeah, and it hasn't been officially announced. So Crawford's going up. Yes. Two weight classes, he's going up. Oh. Yeah, so that's been, that's the rumour. No way. I mean, yeah, the fact that we almost skipped over that, the <laughs> pound for pound number one. There's so much is, going Could be fighting. Like, over the weekend, there's so many different fights yeah, being made. We're also like forgetting about another announcement as well. What Canelo Alvarez and uh, Mungia. Oh, yeah. Jaime Mungia. Mungia. Yeah, mental, mental. So what much a time going to on. be in boxing, you know, yeah. covering it. 2024 is the big year for boxing yeah though. and I, I mean a lot of people when we you, you mentioned it that that instagram reel we had on on jake paul and vidal riley and their rankings a lot of people were saying oh boxing's in the mud boxing's finished hey, jake paul fans um who were commenting on that video <laughs> but boxing, not proper boxing fans but, but, but for me boxing's at the best place it's been like 100 we haven't seen a year like us in boxing but it's no, so my entire life i think it's march like it's March. It's we have so much less of left of the year, and we're talking about you're getting like so all many all of fight. these brilliant fights. You're getting so many fights planned already. You're sort of pushing them towards 2025, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've already got a load. Like you were saying with the whole um, AJ Fury Usyk thing, you know, we're already looking into with your crap predictions. That's 2025. What it looks like. Yeah, let's make some predictions on these fights we've just mentioned. Uh, we won't do all of them. But let's make a few predictions, um, and then we'll wrap it up for for today. Maxi Hughes in Vegas. Do we think he's going to do it, or do we do we think he's going to? You know, it's going to be another Brit where we go, yeah, he's going to win, and he doesn't, uh, which we have a habit of doing. Nah, what I'm do you reckon going for the Mexican? Wow, I'm going to be different. I got Maxi. I'm going for the Mexican as well. Shock, like you've gone uh, back on the Brit. I think we you all... two are disgusting when it comes to this as well. Can I just say and accurate. Who cares? Um, You've got to say honestly who you think is going to win. Honest opinion. Honestly held opinion. Um, (laughs) Dillian White, Christian Hammer, are we all in agreement we think Dillian White's going to win that one? No. No. No, no, Dillian White's going to win. (laughs) Tease. Harry was nearly rattled then. And then... um, Dillian White, easy. Yeah, I think so. On points though, maybe? You know, get some rounds under him. How many rounds is it as well? Is it ten or is it eight? Um, I don't think it's been announced yet. I don't think it's been it's been confirmed, so we don't know. So we don't even know if it's on TV. We don't know how many no. rounds it is. No, it's just in the car park. I'm we sorry. just know it's fighting. No, um, that's me and you later. <laughs> <laughs> and then the magnificent seven <laughs> card. Old into that. Like I said, we won't go through all of them. Um, Joe Joyce Cash Alley. Who are we going for that one? Joyce. 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 Yeah. Ugh, in agreement. Dennis McCann, Brad Strand. Who are we backing for that one? I'm going Dennis McCann myself. Yeah. I think he's going to get the finish oh. on Strand. I just think he, he looks really, really What's good. What's harder to win, the European belt or the Commonwealth belt? Uh, well, it's probably harder to get your hands on a Commonwealth belt, isn't it? But yeah, but whether or not... European have got a bigger range of fighters. Well, yeah. Brad Strand came through a difficult opponent last time out, didn't he? So. Yeah. Who do you think's going to win? <sighs> I'm going to go Dennis McCann. I'm going Dennis McCann. Go on, go uh, I'll go different because yeah, no, Ben's good. currently got his fist up to me so Brad <laughs> Strand's going to win um, and then we'll go Liam Davies um, Eric Robles Ayala do you back the back the Brit to get the um, 100% 100% that's the one I actually I will back the Brit I think I think he's going to win that one super bantam yeah we're all going to see him and then so this is boring hang the on big... what about Zach Parker Zach Parker yeah I mean I back Zach Parker on Zach that Parker, one Zach Parker Zach yeah. Parker 
Oh, uh, I've got different on that one. Wow, wow! And then the big one, Nathan Heaney. We'll give we'll give exact predictions for this one. Nathan Heaney, Brad Pauls. What are you saying, Harry? Heaney, rhyme ten stoppage. Ben. Heaney decision. Okay, I'm going Heaney. I'll go. You have to be different. I'll go eighth round. KO. Wow. Yeah. I'm PS O'Leary fighting as well. That's the one fight we've missed. Pierre okay, so O'Leary, yeah, of course. Right. Hovhannes Matiri Soyan for the Super Light WBC International. Another one. Somebody's always got to go, as Harry likes to say. Pierre um, O'Leary. Could have gave me a warning. I could have done the entire thing. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <sighs> yeah, another great fight. I, yeah, I have, again, I'm going to back the Brit. Um, and Dara Foley are next. Yeah. Number one until Win Island. Yeah. Saturday's going to be very busy. It's going to be say. a busy day. Football, it's going to be a busy day. Final oh, day of Six Nations. Don't remind me of all the football on Saturday. Oh, of course, yeah, you got a big one. I have, Leeds aren't playing until Sunday, Wales, actually, oh, so Wales have got a big game as well. Oh, yeah, let's not forget about Wales. About Wales. Wales. Really g- bottom. We'll focus on the South Wales derby. Ooh, football. Um, <laughs> but I think that pretty much just about rounds it up for, for what was, a, like we said, a, a mad busy uh, episode in terms of everything that's going on. As always, all of our social medias have all the updates, all the information. All the talking points in boxing at the moment, Spotify for our full episodes, or YouTube for our full episodes, a few podcast segments, and all of our interviews and YouTube shorts as well. After all of that, anything else we want to talk about? Anything else we got going on? No. I, I, any, I think we covered everything, though. I think we've pretty much covered that. So that's it for this week, and we'll catch you all next week. <laughs>